Hi, I'm Misha Harris, lead strength and conditioning coach at the Volleyball Center of Excellence at the Richmond Olympic Oval. Here today with Nick Del Bianco, indoor volleyball player for Trinity Western University and Team Canada Beach Volleyball athlete. We're going to give you an inside look into how we approach jump training with some of our high performance volleyball players. Every volleyball player wants to jump a lot higher, and it's always one of our main goals of training but everyone's a little bit different, and so we're gonna try and give you some tools to figure out where you're at as an athlete, where you're starting from, and how to get to your highest jump in the most efficient way possible. So our performance pyramid breaks down all the aspects that co contribute to good athletic performance. So if we're looking at a jump, for example, we need a base of mobility, which is also flexibility or range of motion. Then we need to be stable and have control through that whole range of motion. Then we look at the power aspects, that's how high you can actually jump, how much force your muscles can exert. And then we look at the skill and the technique of your jump, how you coordinate all of your segments. Today our focus is mobility, so we're going to hop over with Nick in a second, check out how his range of motion is looking, and then show you some drills that we can use to improve that range of motion if those are some weak links for us. So the first thing to look at when we're looking at mobility and how it contributes to jumping is some really basic hip mobility. There's a lot of ways to break down and look at how our hips move, but some really simple ways that you can test on your own would be a toe touch to start with and also a deep squat. So Nick's going to show you his toe touch. If you go feet right together and just reach down and try and touch your toes. So if we can touch our toes here easily, that's what we want. That's at least a baseline competency. We're not too limited in this stretch. Ideally, if you're really good, you can maybe get your palms down to the ground and Nick's not quite there, but that's okay. We don't need to be gymnast flexible to start jump training. Our next test would be a deep squat. So here we look at more than just the flexibility in the posterior aspect of our hips, the hamstrings and butt, and we wanna see how everything works together to lower us down to a deep range of hip flexion. So to set this one up, you just put feet shoulder width apart, toes straight ahead, and we'll start with just hands over top of your chest, and then you lower your butt down as deep as you can. And from there, we want to see that our hips can drop right below our knees and that our feet can stay flat on the ground. And that's a decent deep squat to start with. Come on back up. If that doesn't go well for you, say you try and do the deep squat and you can only get down to here before maybe your heels want to come off the ground or your back wants to round way forward, then you can always test it with a little bit of raise underneath your heels. So if you step up on a board or maybe a textbook or something and you can do the same thing, and this is going to show you, if you go ahead again, if you're way better here than you are before, or than you are when you're just on the ground, then it could be a little bit of ankles that are tight for you. It also could be some upper body tightness. But that lets you at least know that your hips are moving okay. So those are some really basic tests to do to know if you need to work on this movement a little bit. So if your toe touch doesn't go well and you can't quite touch your toes, one easy drill that we can do to help improve that range and unlock your hips before we start making them stronger or more powerful would be this contract, relax hamstring stretch. So Nick's going to demonstrate by bringing his left knee up into his chest to start with. Then he takes his right hand and reaches across. Really important that we grab the outside of the foot here. And we have a firm grip on it. Then he's going to start to extend his leg, feeling a deep stretch into the hamstring. You notice his right leg stays straight against the ground and his shoulders are as close to the ground as he can get and his head's relaxed down. So here we start adding the contract relax component. So we're going to take a deep breath in and then as you contract, he's trying to bring his leg all the way back down to the ground, but his hand is resisting against that. He's gonna hold that for 10 seconds and you'll probably get a little bit shaky as you do this. And then after 10 seconds, you stop pushing and you just reach your heel a little bit higher towards the ceiling. And you can see his leg gets a bit more flexible as you do that. The next stretch that we're going to do with Nick is a deep hip opener to help open up all the muscles that limit hip flexion of bringing that high. So he's going to start in a kneeling lunge position here and start to shift his weight forward and drop his hips right down to the ground. Here his right foot is well outside of his left foot, so he's opening up lots of space for his hips to come through. And he's going to come down to his hands there and try and push this knee far to the outside. Even okay actually if he comes onto the outside of his foot and then starts to drop those hips down a little bit deeper. As you get really deep, you could even come onto the forearms. And then we hang out here and take deep breaths. And then just like the last stretch, we add some contract relax. So as we try and contract, 
He's going to try and squeeze everything in and around his hips and push his heel hard down into the ground. Going to hold that for about 10 seconds. It'll make him nice and shaky. And then after he holds that, he's going to relax everything and just drop the hips a little bit deeper. And you can see he gets a little bit more range. Keep working on developing your toe touch and your deep squat pattern using those two stretches we went over today. And next time, we'll go over how you test and how you train stability and how that contributes to your jumping performance. Now to let you in on the real secret of how we train our athletes at the Richmond Olympic Oval and with Volleyball Canada is that now that we have a focus, if you know you need to work on mobility, you train with intent. We'll see you next time.